So hi everybody, my name is Kyle. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how urbanization and changes in air quality are impacting nitrogen, specifically in the northeastern US. So I think when a lot of people hear the word ecology, they tend to think of really pristine natural ecosystems that are totally untouched by human influence. However, our world is becoming increasingly urban, and this kind of ecosystem that's very natural um, is no longer representative of much of the world we live in. In fact, in the US, urban areas have more than quadrupled since 1945. Um, in the map behind me, you can see the extent of um, human impacted land in the United States. In red is developed land, and in blue are wilderness areas. Uh, wilderness is a measure of the extent of built environments, the number of roads, percent cropland, things like that. Um, and the big takeaway from this slide is that much of the U.S. is impacted by, um, by humans, especially in my region of study in the northeastern U.S. Now, one of the impacts of urbanization is forest fragmentation. Um, forest fragmentation is basically the breakup of large um, areas of forest into smaller patches, and that can result from um, a road being built through a forest or part of a forest being cut down to have um, pasture land for, for grazing, um, really anything that breaks up a big group of forests into smaller pieces. And um, as forests are becoming more urbanized, um, there's an increase in forest edges. So in this picture of the Boston Commons, you can see sort of two patches of forest. Um, and indicated on the slide is what a forest edge looks like. A forest edge is anywhere where the continuous canopy ends and there's a shift in the, in the environment beyond it. So a field, um, a road, buildings, things like that. Um, and forest edges experience a different suite of environmental factors than the forest interior. For instance, they often have higher temperatures, um, increased light availability, and increased nutrient deposition compared to the forest interior. Additional factors that can result from urbanization include an increase in impervious surface area, or which is just a fancy way of saying um, like pavement covered areas. Um, also increases in air pollutants, including ground level ozone and NOx emissions. Uh, both of these air pollutants come from um, human activities like driving cars and other industrial um, activities. So I'm very interested in figuring out how um, these factors relating to urbanization that I just mentioned, um, increased forest fragmentation, increased pavement covered areas, and increased air pollution, how they impact nitrogen cycling, specifically net soil mineralization. So net soil mineralization is the rate at which nitrogen becomes available for plant uptake. Um, so when a leaf falls down out of a tree and lands on the ground, that leaf is chock full of nitrogen. But it's in a form that trees can't actually take up, so it has to be first broken down by microbes into a form that is available for plant take up. Now, why do I care about nitrogen? Why should any of you care about nitrogen? Well, it's often a limiting nutrient in ecosystems, which is just to say that the amount of nitrogen um, prevents how quickly and how much forest can grow. Um, in fact, when you add fertilizer to your garden at home, the predominant ingredient in that fertilizer is nitrogen. Um, so nitrogen, nitrogen in general is really important uh, for overall ecosystem functioning. Now, how did I do this? Well, I wasn't alone. Um, I worked as part of a greater project in the Templar and Hutira labs on the uh, Urban New England project. And I took soil samples across um, seven sites um, on an urban to rural gradient, going from the most urban in Boston, you can see those three yellow balloons representing our sites, all the way out to our most rural site in Petersham, Massachusetts. And at each site, um, I sampled also along an edge to interior gradient to get an um, idea of how both forest fragmentation and some of those urbanization factors are impacting nitrogen cycling. Um, so the, the lower picture, is just a schematic representing at any given site what my sampling looked like. So on the far left is a forest edge, and I took soil samples at 0, 15, 30, 60, and 90 meters from that edge, again at each of those seven sites. So this next slide is, um, uh, there's seven aerial photos of each of our seven sites. The four sites on the upper part um, outlined in red are our urban sites, and the lower three on the bottom are rural. And this color coding scheme is going to be what I'm gonna be, is, is how I'm going to be coding urban and rural for the rest of my presentation. 
So um, just an immediate visual impact. You can see those first uh, four red sites, the urban sites, um, just have a lot more pavement, more roads, uh, more houses, and in general seem visually to be, um, have greater human impact. So at each of the sites, um, I looked at soil temperature, soil organic matter, distance from the edge, percent impervious surface area, or pavement, um, NOx concentrations and ozone concentrations. Um, and I, again, measured net soil mineralization um, and, and I'm trying to figure out how those explanatory variables on the left are impacting um, soil mineralization, the rate at which nitrogen becomes available for plant uptake. So just to get right into the results, what did I find? Um, to start off, again, urban is in red, rural in gray. And on the y-axis here, I'm showing you soil temperature. Um, so these results, we see that urban um, soils are generally at a higher temperature than rural. This really isn't surprising because urban areas experience a heat island effect, meaning that um, urban areas tend to um, be warmer than rural ones. And we see that confirmed here in our uh, soil temperature. Um, I found no difference in the percent soil organic matter, which is to say the amount of the soil um, that was once living matter. Um, there's no difference in rural and urban sites. However, when we look at air pollutants, um, I did see a significant difference in NOx and ozone concentrations, and those uh, concentrations are elevated in our urban sites compared to rural sites. Um, now, the, the big result, how did net soil mineralization uh, look in urban rural sites? Well, we see mineralization is elevated in urban sites compared to rural sites, um, which suggests there's something going on here with the four factors on the left-hand side um, impacting those rates of mineralization that we see in urban and rural sites. Now, if you recall from a few minutes earlier in my presentation, I'm also interested in looking at forest fragmentation. Um, so this slide is showing you how edge effects impact um, mineralization in those the two site characteristics, urban and rural. Um, on the y-axis of this graph is net soil mineralization, and on the x is the distance from the edge. So you can see our the red line, which is our urban sites, show a positive increasing trend with distance from edge, which means that um, in urban sites, mineralization rates increase as you move into the forest as distance from the edge increases. Um, what's really interesting is we don't see an edge effect like that in the rural sites. Um, so the slope of the black line is about, it's almost zero, there's really no relationship, meaning that mineralization rates are the same at the edge and the interior and they don't change as you um, move throughout the forest. Um, so this is really interesting because while we do see a difference in urban and rural sites in net mineralization at the interior of the forest, there's actually no difference at the edge, um, which indicates that when we're thinking about mineralization rates and nitrogen cycling in urban and rural areas, we should take into account um, edge effects and the potential for these to decrease the difference between urban and rural sites. So in conclusion, um, we found overall that urban sites have higher rates of mineralization than rural sites, but edge effects can reduce um, the rate of mineralization at the edges of urban sites. And ozone and NOx concentrations are elevated at urban sites, which could be influencing net mineralization rates. Um, thank you, and I'd like to acknowledge everyone that worked on this project with me. Um, my advisors, everyone in the Templar and Heteria Labs, all of the landowners and managers that let us take samples um, on their land, as well as our funding sources. Any questions? <laughs> Sander. So with increased soil mineralization, trees would grow faster and larger. So isn't this a net positive for the forested areas surrounded by urban environments? So I would say there's the potential for trees to go faster. We don't know if that's actually happening. Um, so another measure um, that I didn't explain, we look at how much nitrogen is actually being taken up by the trees. Um, it's hard to measure that directly, but sometimes <clears throat> even though there's more nitrogen becoming available in a system, it gets washed out of the system. Um, also, I don't want to be normative and say what is, what is good for the forest. We're just saying what is happening. Um, but on some level, if you're just saying, yes, rates of tree growth is good, then yes. Um, but there's a lot of other things that are going on. Um, so no, I, I'm not going to say you should start fragmenting all your forest so they'll grow faster. It's not necessarily true. 
Yes. That was really great. Um, so I was a little, it's a little counterintuitive to me that the edge of the urban area mm -hmm. is more like the rural area. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've thought about that. I was just wondering what your thoughts are. Um, yes. Yeah, so I th let's go back to the figure. So we see in the, in the uh, further into the interior that urban uh, rates are higher. And I think that has to do with a difference in <coughs> mainly the temperature. Mm -hmm. So we tend to see um, that mineralization rates are higher when temperatures are warmer. Um, but at the edge, I didn't talk about this, but um, ozone, uh, ozone concentrations tend to be higher. So I think that there's a chance that um, air pollution, meaning ozone, could be depressing the mineralization rates at the edge of urban sites because urban sites tend to have more ozone compared to rural sites. Um, so that could be causing that distinct difference in urban, rural. Um, in addition, uh, the edges of urban sites are a lot drier um, just because it's hotter. Um, so it's kind of a combination of the urbanization factors that are it, on one hand, driving up mineralization rates in the interior, those same factors could be having a, a problem or, or causing them to be lower at the edge. Yes, Masha. Do you think there are any other factors that might impact mineralization rates that you could have left out? Absolutely. Or what would you do if you had <laughs> extra resources? Um, so the, actually the species composition of uh, trees also has something to do with um, how quickly mineralization rates happen. And we did try to control for the kinds of species. Um, but that's impossible to do fully. We didn't have exact perfect replicates at each urban or rural area. So that could have had an effect. Also just the soil type, like the, the parent material of each site could be completely different. Again, that's something we try to control for, um, but we're doing field work. It's hard to actually really control everything in a, in, out there in you know, the environment. All right, thank you.